I'm Duncan Blythe, the creator of SuperDuperDB. I'm going to show you how to implement video search with SuperDuperDB. You can find this example in the examples directory of our GitHub repository here, video search. And you can also try it interactively online by scrolling down and clicking through to our managed Jupyter environment. So let's get started. The first step in any SuperDuperDB application is to connect to your data store with SuperDuperDB. I'm connecting to MongoDB by setting this environment variable, MongoDB URI. That gives me the DB variable, which is a virtual data layer, which manages communication between models and my data store database. I can use DB a lot like a database connector, but it does much, much more than that. So I've connected. The next step is to load data into SuperDuperDB. And because we're working with videos, we need to do something more than we usually do when inserting data into our database. So we have this concept of encoder in SuperDuperDB, which allows you to do exactly that. In combination with the configuration hybrid storage, an encoder allows us to pull videos from URIs on the web and S3 buckets and insert references to the downloaded data on our file system to the database. Everything managed by the system. It's just a case of simply calling the edb add function on your defined encoder. So now once we've done that, we're ready to use this encoder to insert a video. So the video was downloaded and inserted. We can check what the record in the database looks like by calling a simple MongoDB query. And you see here the reference to the video is there. SuperDuperDB allows users and developers to work with arbitrary models from the Python open source ecosystem. That includes, in this example, OpenCV, but you can use PyTorch, Hugging Face, you can define your own bespoke functions. It's really very, very flexible. So here I'm wrapping a function with the model wrapper from SuperDuperDB. We go further than we usually would in our concept of model. For us, a model is an arbitrary function which potentially is associated with data which lives inside the model, and which allows us to do all of the pre-processing and AI modeling that we would like to do with our data store. So now you can see I've defined my model here. I've wrapped it with our model wrapper. And now it's a super duper DB citizen in some sense. And we can insert it into the system. We can add it to the system with this db add command, wrapping it this time with a listener. So a listener allows us to listen for incoming data and apply the model to that data. So here you see I've specified that this model, which actually processes the video and extracts frames from it, which will then get saved in the data store. This model will be applied to this query, our collection.find, looking at the key video. So looking inside documents, looking for the video key and applying this model to, to that data. When I create this, so when I do the db.add on this component, the first time we create this, data which is yet to be processed will be processed. To verify that this worked, I'm extracting one frame from the output collection, which is associated with this model. And you can see it here, a frame from the video, which is incidentally a video of lots of animals. <clears throat> now to perform search, I'm going to use some open source models from the Python ecosystem. It's called Clip, but it's just an example. You could use any PyTorch model. You can use models from Hugging Face. You can define your own models. So similarly to before, I'm going to wrap 
my model, which I'm importing here with the torch model wrapper because it's a PyTorch model. And I'm also going to define some pre-processing and post-processing in order to map the data which is in the database here, images, to the format we need to pass through the model. And then out the other side, I'm going to post-process post the outputs with this post-processing function. And I'm going to do this for both models. There's a visual model which is going to process the images in the database. And there's a text model which I'm going to use at runtime, at search time, to process textual queries into the right representation to actually perform the search. So these are quite large models, so it takes a couple of seconds. Now we're ready to create the search component. So the search component also contains listeners. The reason it contains listeners is because we want to keep our search up to date. So we're going to listen for incoming data and apply the models which turn data into vectors on the fly as new data gets inserted. So inside the vector index, we have two listeners. One of them is responsible for computing vectors, and the other is responsible for listening for incoming queries. That's why it's called compatible listener. This is a case of a sort of multimodal video search. So we're extracting frames from video to images. We're vectorizing those images, and then we're searching over those images using text. So this is very nice multimodal search application showing you how flexible SuperDuperDB is. So I'm running this on my client, but in the cloud you can use GPUs to speed this up. Uh, we have support for Dask and we're working on support for Ray, so this can be scalable. And now the app has been prepared. So let's just look at the video which we originally inserted. It's right here. So if I open that URL, <laughs> multiple animals. Now we're going to search that video using plain text for various animals. So here I'm searching for some ducks. I successfully extracted ducks from the video. Let's try monkeys playing. So this result here gives me the record where the image which contains this search term is to be found and a reference to the point in the video where um, that occurs. And so I'm able in this block here, just using a bit of HTML magic to start the video from that point. <laughs> so there we go. Ducks, monkeys playing, have fun with it, contribute, give us a star, become part of the conversation and this new community.